So there's a story that needs to be told, I guess. Um, we went with the troop to uh, ride the Virginia Creeper today, which is a great, it's about two hours, two and a half hour, two hours, 20 minutes away from Knoxville and Damascus, Virginia. Cool place, really cool place. Interesting history. The uh, uh, Abington section is what we end up riding. North Carolina won't let the trail extend in North Carolina because of uh, uh, eminent domain issues or whatever their laws are. And the, the train used to go all the way into North Carolina for logging and they, they would log trees and bring them down into Abington or Damascus or whatever to actually uh, turn it into lumber. And, and then eventually that changed and it became a coal uh, train. It moved a lot of coal. And as you ride this trail or walk this trail, uh, there, there's coal dust everywhere. It's just, it's a dirty thing if you hit the ground. And um, then, then, then eventually, I think it became passenger or tourist or something. But in 1977, the rail quit working, and uh, they tore up the rails, and it became a trail. It was rails to trails, and horses rode on it. People hiked it, and there was this nice lady who. Um, I'm going to draw a blank on the name of the business. There was this nice lady who, I want to say she was hiking the Appalachian Trail and found Damascus, because the AT goes through that area. For whatever the, whatever brought her to Damascus, she was in Damascus, and she noticed that horses were riding on the trail. She noticed that uh, hikers were using the trail. And then, uh, but she said, what about bicycles? And she opened Blue Blaze uh, bike rentals with five bikes and one trailer. And that's what... That's what started this whole industry of, there are so many bike rental places in Damascus now, it's unbelievable. There were 45 bikes that went up at, uh, at the 10 o'clock thing uh, with us. We, we got in our van, we had 14 people in it. So 14 bikes, uh, I'm averaging 15. So there were three trailers, each one holds 14 bikes. So maybe it's 42 people went up there. But we got up there, there were already people up there. Beautiful scenery. Um, you unload the bikes, you, you, the bike places provide helmets, they provide bikes, the price is reasonable, it was like $31 a person, included the trip, uh, the 35 minute drive up there, and the segment that we ride is 17 miles, and you can ride another 17, which gets you uh, a 34 mile ride, but what we do is we start at the top of the trail, and we use Sun, Sun Dog Outfitters, which is right there on the trail, now Blue Blaze is on the trail too, it's a little further down, they are the original, the one that the lady uh, did with five, and uh, and the uh, with five bikes and a trailer, and um, that's what we used to use. Uh, I guess we could still use them, but we just happened to use Sundog this time. We've had a good experience with both of them. Um, anyhow, coming down the trail, our, we're having a great day of it. We we had an initial injury up at the top when someone got off. They got on their bike and immediately fell down and scratched the palms of their hands. That's okay. It's small stuff. Then as we're going down the trail, there's this, we come up on these people that are on the side of the trail. And so we stop. We said, do you need some help? And they're like, please, if you have a medical kit or something, help us. And this lady's comforting this 15-year-old girl. And they've kind of got the gauze or, or, or the paper towels, whatever they're using to cover up her wound. Uh, they've got that, sorry, dog's misbehaving, they've got that, um, they, they, they've got that blocking her view so they can't see her wound, and when I went up to it, they pulled the towels up, and the wound, oh my gosh, the wound was about yay big around, I mean, it was the, the size of my thumb in thickness and width, and, and, and like here, it was just this missing skin it, and, and it was a oh man and I was looking at it going okay what can I do for this so I put on my rubber gloves and I doctored her up some and I put on the gauze and wrapped it and tied it and made sure it was elevated and did all the right stuff and we got on the walkie talkies and we got our guys to look for a trail there, there, there's trail patrols there's people who patrol the trail for just this kind of reason and um, eventually we get an ambulance they get a, not we but I think her family went down and got an ambulance to come up and and so they brought this gator, uh, this little four-wheeler up the trail, an ATV type thing, and, and we leave. And we're like, cool, life's good. We're at the end of the trail. At the very end of the trail, we can see Sundog Outfitters. And I see the ambulances. And I think, whoa, this'll be funny. I'm gonna take a picture of the ambulances 
and be able to send a picture to all the parents and say, nobody got hurt on this trip. So I pull out my phone, distracted bike riding. I've got my left hand on the handlebar. I pull out the phone, I take the picture, I turn around, I realize I'm coming down a hill a little hot and everybody has gathered under the bridge because it started raining and I need to stop the bike. I've got the phone in this hand with the rear brakes, which is the ones you're supposed to use, more so than the front brakes, and um, I just grabbed the front brakes and squeezed. Instantly realized my mistake, phone went flying, I don't care, and I went over the handlebars. I did a tuck and roll, which is why this is like this. I scraped my finger up against the concrete and landed on this side, and then I got to go up to the ambulances, which were at that time pulling the girl we helped off the trail and sticking her in it. And the lady who had been helping the girl came up and I was like, hey, you remember me? Check it out. So that's the story and I'm sticking to it. Um, there were lots of other people there, my son included, another adult. They may have a slightly different perspective, but that's the way I remember it. Now I have to go clean this mess up. Man, all I had to do was just not take that picture. Well, no, all I had to do was not use that brake. I could have just kept going and hoped I didn't, I don't know. It was stupid in all regards.